Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to another video. We've got quite an interesting case here and what you're going to see in this video is ultra sticky earwax. Now, normal earwax in and of its own accord is sticky of course, but this is far more sticky than, than normal and unfortunately it tends to block up the suction probe quite a bit. Now not only is the ear canal totally filled with this sort of dehydrated molasses type wax, um, but there's also some adhered to the eardrum, uh, which makes the procedure slightly more complicated, which is why I wanted to share it with you. So at the moment we can see we're just kind of stripping away bits and pieces. Now when you see me exiting in and out of the ear canal, um, it's because off camera I'm furiously dipping the suction probe in and out of water to try and unblock it and draw that, that wax through. So you can see here we have sort of this central boulder, um, but it's not really coming away very easily. So what I'm going to do is apply some olive oil to the ear and that will first of all lubricate everything up, for want of a better phrase. And you can see here I'm just dabbing away the excess. So I have really have gone to town here. I've done at least eight to nine squirts of the ear roll, which is the, the olive oil that I use in clinic. Um, so I do tend to go, go to town with it. Um, so that's going to lubricate everything up and then it should give me a fairly moist surface for the suction probe to attach onto. And you'll see when I drag it out, I mean, it is a monstrously gigantic piece of wax um, with a little tail of dead skin at the end. And I'll show you what that looks like on the tissue paper afterwards. Um, so as you can see, I'm just wiggling it back and forth um, just to try and loosen it up. And for some reason, the actual top half of this sort of iceberg piece um, was really soft. So I ended up sort of rolling it before um, dragging it out of the canal. And you can see as well as there's, there's hair mixed in with it as well unfortunately. Um, so we're finally making some progress and you can just about see the top half there how it's all sort of gooey and mushy. So that's the piece that actually gave me the opportunity to drag it out and so I'll probably just rotate it here so I'll catch it on the top, roll it over and then I'll be able to drag it out of the ear canal. So it's actually the, ear, the aperture of the ear canals are quite thin compared to the earwax piece but there we have it and it's got that little tail at the end like a kite sort of. There we go. So now when we enter the ear canal, we can see the right hand side of the eardrum, which is sort of pale gray, sort of tinged blue. Um, and then the left hand side of the eardrum is again, coated with this ultra sticky wax. And the problem with that is, is that the eardrum in and of itself is quite, um, is quite strong compared to just, you know, a piece of skin. So a lot of people assume it's just sort of a disc of, um, thin skin, um, but it does have three layers to it. So the outer layer, which you can see with, with a, a scope, is, is just skin, it's epithelium. Um, but then it has this special middle layer, and the middle layer has been the, the source of interest um, amongst scientists for quite some time. Uh, and it's full of collagen fibers organized in a specific way, which give it its strength and unique properties. So here you can see, I'm just sort of tugging on this wax, but it's making the eardrum flex a little bit. And that makes me a little bit nervous because that top bit where the wax is adhered, it doesn't have this middle fibrous layer that I'm talking about. So that's actually um, the, the sort of floppy flaccid bit of the um, eardrum called the pars flaccida. And the bit below the wax is called the pars tensor, which does have um, that fibrous layer, which, is, which, which has the collagen fibers in it. Um, so that's the middle layer. And then the third layer in the back is uh, a mucosa lining. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is I've applied a little bit more olive oil here um, just to see if I can get some purchase on this and hopefully the olive oil should again allow me to kind of, to kind of <laughs> so the endoscope, this, honestly this is the bane of my life, if anyone uses an endoscope you'll know what I'm talking about, the end of the endoscope gets smeared constantly whenever I apply um, olive oil, but anyway not to worry, so again I'm, I'm trying to manipulate it but again I can see the eardrum flexing um, which, whilst the patient didn't find this uncomfortable, it should be avoided really, um, because we don't want to do any damage. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do is just mop up a little bit of this excess and then try and catch it from the side. So sometimes if you have a little bit of wax that's on the side, sometimes if you peel that off, you'll get really lucky and it'll peel all the way down to the eardrum. So again, just manipulating this off the side and there's more than enough oil in here now to, to give me a good amount of control here. 
And I don't know if any, as a, just as a side point, I don't know if anyone else will agree with me, but if you, if you do or you don't, leave a, leave a, a comment below. But um, as I was reviewing this footage, I thought this, just this image here looks absolutely stunning. It's beautiful. If you look at all those dilated blood vessels, and if you look at the color of the eardrum, it's just such a wonderful contrast because the eardrum obviously being um, sort of gray, bluey, shiny, and then those dilated blood vessels are sort of a nice crimson red. Um, I just thought that was such a beautiful image. And I've not um, fiddled with the, the color saturation or anything like that. Um, this was just the light that was coming back into the endoscope. So um, even inside the ear, you can find beauty. So there we go. So we've made a fair amount of progress here and we won't be able to get all of this, unfortunately. Um, but what we want to do is just remove enough wax just to restore the hearing. Because when we re removed that huge boulder of earwax right at the start, the patient felt that their ear was better, but that their hearing was still muffled. And it's understandable why, because essentially this is tantamount to sort of having sort of thick glue on, the, on a snare drum. You know, you can hit the snare drum and it'll vibrate, but it won't be quite as resonant. So there we go. We've managed to clear most of it up. Um, there's still a little pocket there on the left side, um, but this is a fairly good outcome. And here we see the main culprit, uh, which is that huge boulder with the tail on the end, like a kite. So, uh, and then just that little smidgen that I removed off the side there. So it's about a centimeter. So there we go. I hope you found that video interesting, entertaining, informative, and uh, there'll be more videos to come, but uh, do by all means subscribe, give a like, and I will see you on the next video.